Welcome everyone, this is the second lesson about testing and in this one we will focus more on how we can control the test. Run just some of them if we want to show the output of the functions when we run the test and how we can ignore some tests or maybe we want to run just the ignore the test. Let's get started. In the previous lesson, we checked how we can test our Rust application. So let's dive a bit deeper and let's see how we can control how tests are run. To do this, we create a new project. We can do this typing cargo new dash dash lib. This is the option to create a library. And then we can call it like live tests. Then we step into the directory. And then we can open this with any IDE we want. And when we create a library like this, this is the code we have. So if we type just cargo new and the name of a project will have a main.s file. If we type cargo new dash dash lib, we'll have a file called lib.rs and this code, which is a simple function with a test. Okay, you can see here we have this attribute, it's basically an annotation, and then we have a function that will test this other function. Let's try to type cargo test this test passes. The default code actually uh, works. Now let's try something different. I want to remove this, remove the code here and replace it with a different code. Let's try this. We have this function that prints and returns 10 and then it will return just 10 no matter what and then we have a value here and then we are running two tests here. So here if I type cargo test one of the two tests is failing. Can you see here on line 17 this test will fail. Why? Because in the test we say that this function will return 5 and this is not true. And this is a bit hard to understand what happened here because here we wrote something wrong in the test. How can we debug our testing? We can use this option to show the function output. I want to show again that when we type cargo test we don't see the line 2. This println is not shown. You can see this I got the value is not shown here because this is just running the, the test. So can I show what the function is doing while I'm testing the application, basically in calling the function? Yes, I can. I can use this option, which is cargo test dash dash space dash dash show dash output. This is the first option that I want to show you. Okay, and now here the test, of course, is still failing. But if we go here, check here, we are getting the output of the function. So if I'm actually interested in what the function is doing, I can use this command dash dash show dash output. Side note, this dash dash after test, it means that we are actually using this um, option not for cargo, but for this other command, which is test. So test space dash dash space and then dash dash show output. Something else that I also want to uh, tell you before we keep going is that uh, when we run tests, maybe we have multiple CPUs on our machine, probably this is the usual use case nowadays, and we have multiple threads on the CPU. So there, is there a way to force uh, the test to go sequentially, so one by one? Yes, there is an option. It's hard to show, but I just want to show you the command, which is cargo test space dash dash and then test dash threads and then the name of the threads we want to use when we are running this test. This is for if we have a multi-thread CPU, which is now the case. Of course, we can see a different output. This is just to show the command. I want to show you something else. Can we run a subset of tests? Because so far we did just a cargo test and all the tests they were just running. But sometimes we want to run just some of the tests. So we have this function, pub function that adds two numbers, and then we have three tests. You can see them on line 10, 15, and 20. So we have three tests. Let's try cargo test first, cargo test. And we can see here we have 
three tests and all three of them are passing. Okay, so those tests are, all three of them are valid. Now, let's say that I want to run just the test on line 20 fn100 test. Can I do this? Yes, I can do it. I can just type cargo test and then the name of the function. So 100. And you can see here, in this case, we are running just the test on line 20. So this is to run a single test. It's similar to Docker Compose when we want to run just a service, okay? I have one question for you. If I type cargo test to TWO, do you think that this will uh, run some tests? The names here are online 10, 15, and 20. We have add 2 and 2, add 3 and 2, and 100 as names of the function. So do you think that this will actually run some test or not? Cargo test 2. Okay, this is not easy, but I want to show you. So if I type cargo test 2, okay, it runs to test. It has nothing to do with this 2. The reason is that if I type something after cargo test, it will try to match the name of the functions that we are, I'm using to test. So by knowing this, um, we can be smart and give good names to the functions that we're using to test. I don't know, like this is uh, for the testing cards or something like that. In that case, it will try to match all the names of the functions. Let's try again. If I try cargo test uh, one, it will run the test 100. So it's trying to match the names of the function, okay? It's interesting because if I create these uh, function names in a smart way, I will get a cool test. Now, can I ignore some tests? Let's say that I want to write the test, but I don't want to run some tests, similar to git ignore. I can do that. I can just add an attribute, ignore, check line 15 here. And now if I type cargo, test, you can see here we have one test ignored and then two tests, the number 10 and 21. We also have a recap here, one ignored. And basically we can decide some tests that maybe for a while we don't want to run. Now, can we run just the tests that have the ignored attribute? So I want to run the ignored ones. Can I do that? I can do that. Cargo test space dash dash space dash dash ignored. And in this case, I'm running only the ignored test. Of course, because tests are handled by humans, so maybe in this case, I want to run the ignored one. So basically I can have a group of tests, a group of ignored tests, and then I can run only the ignored one. Okay, and this is the end of this quick lesson. So basically we went more into the details of testing. We saw a couple of options. This is not a course about test-driven development, but we are checking how we can test our applications in Rust, okay?